Hey guys, welcome back to the Meet the Athlete podcast. In today's episode, I'm joined by Will Barnico. Recently won the under 20 race at Liverpool Cross Challenge and will be representing Team GB in Turin, Italy in just a couple of weeks' time. He's had a pretty insane year winning National Cross, representing Team GB on the track as well. So without further ado, here's a young athlete on the up. So if you don't know, get to know Will Barnico. Enjoy the episode and take care. So guys, we're joined with Will Barnico, fresh off of Liverpool Cross Challenge at the weekend. How are you feeling, Will? Feeling great, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to thank you firstly for having me on the podcast. Um, great pleasure. And um, yeah, sort of back from the first gym session back, so recovering after that and getting ready for the year of crossing um, in Turin. Yeah, good stuff. Well, we'll start with that then. It's a hot topic, the under-20 cross challenge. How does it feel to be undisputably the best under-20 cross-country runner in the country after following up from winning nationals earlier in the year? Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's always something I've aimed for. I've always wanted to do it. I've, I've done it before. It just, it feels, yeah, it feels great. I'm, I'm looking to do, looking to develop on that and I'm go for MS like these at like these year champs basically that's my yeah. that's my big game yeah for sure would, would you say you feel a bit unbeatable when it comes to UK under 20 running at the moment especially cross um especially yeah especially in the cross yeah um I feel I do definitely feel comfortable I, I sort of go into races now especially in cross sort of feeling like I can sort of just do what I want yeah um there's definitely there's definitely competition coming up through the ranks so you've got the likes of Sam Mills like the younger lot, Ed Bird, people like that. Yeah, at the moment, I'm pretty, I'm pretty comfortable with how it's going, especially with my training. I'm, I'm just getting more and more confident as I do more and develop more and add little bits in my life and all sort of that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Fine. So, uh, talk me through the race. Was there any tactics going into, into Liverpool or was it a case of, I know I'm the fittest on the line, I'm just going to take it out hard and make people hurt? Yeah, well, I sort of came with the... the of tactic that I knew that if I was hurting everyone else is going to be hurting too but I sort of my tactic was to sort of put myself in a position where it was e- like easy-ish for me so that I wasn't almost going into lactic or like tiring but everyone else was tiring in the same in the sense because if I just tie I make it too hard and just make everyone else tire out of time myself so I sort of I put myself in that sort of threshold bit where I'm fine the others aren't yeah. and then after and then sort of like after the gun, off the gun went like that was that was a hot one of the hardest bits of the race, just the start, mm. sprinting out. And then once it kind of calmed down a bit, I was like, okay, it slowed down quite a bit. And I was like, okay, I'm just gonna take it on and see it comes with. And sort of Sam Mills was only was the only one who came and sort of just I just tried to the consecutive laps was just about me trying to break him basically. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I I have to say when I saw you come through at halfway, it did look like you were just jogging. And Sam was not holding on for dear life, but he looked like he was just visibly yeah. struggling a lot more. What, what's your uh, what's your relationship with Sam? Because obviously you you come to, you, you tend to come like pretty close. Well, yeah, that's 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 actually the first time I've ever raced him. I sort of met him then. I, I've I've seen him like in results and stuff. Like, and he's yeah, he's, he's a talented kid, and um, he's yeah, I've never really met him, but I'm looking forward to the competitions. I'm upcoming competitions to them. So yeah, yeah, sure. looks he's, like he's a good lad. He's a good lad. Could be the start of a good competition, a little bromance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So obviously, um, you won National Cross earlier this year um, at Parliament Hill, and now you've won Liverpool. Their their courses are kind of polar opposites in terms of one's really yeah, they are. one's really flat. Is there one that you prefer, or you just find you're pretty good at both? Um, probably like Parliament Hill is probably a more fun course in the sense, like it's just like it's in the middle of London, like just everything's there. Like it's just, it's. I think it's just such a much more well-known course. Winning there is always brilliant. Yeah. And um, yeah, but I really prefer Parliament Hill. Liverpool is much more of a. It's more, much more. I don't know. I don't know how to describe Liverpool, but definitely prefer Parliament Hill. I think. Yeah, it doesn't help you have to travel so far for Liverpool. Yeah. Yeah. You finish the race, you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go celebrate. Psych. I've got <laughs> got to drive. Yeah, got, got three five hours. Got to, we have a five-hour journey back to wherever I live. Yeah, I mean, well, I guess you're it's only two hours for me, but yeah, I guess you're at Birmingham Uni for sure. Yeah. So obviously, um, winning for those listeners at home that don't know, um, winning Eurocross, um, not Eurocross, winning Liverpool gets you on the plane, um, to Eurocross, um, as part of the team, um, but this is obviously isn't your first time representing Team GB, representing Team GB on the track, representing them at the Eurocross last year as well. Do you feel like 
the feeling changes a little bit? Do you find it kind of the high wears off a bit or are you still as buzzing to represent Team GB as it was like the first time? Yeah. Uh, I think the first I've, the first vest I ever had, I um, I did, I came, I was sort of coming, I was an under 17 was my first vest when I went to Lisbon. I was 16, I, I didn't, I sort of walked up to the level thinking, yeah, I, I could do it. Um, I wouldn't be too surprised if I didn't go to Liverpool ran the race that was probably one of the hardest races I've ever ran in my life just I was really just clinging on the dear life the whole time secured fifth and I managed to get on the plane for that and I remember I remember that was probably one of the best feelings I've ever had in my life like just making that first vest especially at such a young age but the buzz now is so different the buzz now is is I've got I see every like when I made the GB team when you make it as a youngster it's all about getting the vest you know like when you're like English schools, getting the like your English schools vest, it's all sort of that buzz. But once, like I've ran it a few times now, and I'm sort of like sort of a bit like I say this like I remember after Worlds in Cali, I sort of after, I didn't I just missed out on the final. I sort of sat there thinking I'm sort of sick and tired just turning up in a vest. I want to actually do something. So the buzz much more is now is a, a massive opportunity to almost make a name for myself. Yeah. So that's that's the big it's a different yeah it's a very different buzz sort of yeah. but it's the buzz is still there but like the little kid inside me is still you know wanting to get that yeah for yeah, sure yeah. well you you came ninth last year which is some would say that's still an insane run I, i'd be part of that group do you think <laughs> this year a year on you're in a much stronger position to maybe push those net medals yeah definitely 100 percent. you reckon so no that's yeah. good, good. Yeah. Um, i really hope you do yeah <laughs> So, um, what are your plans for the future? Obviously, you you've got the quality to go pro. You you definitely yeah. got you've got the potential. Is that the plan? Do you do you want? Definitely, to, yeah, I definitely want to go pro. To cross, move to track a little bit more because you seem to have uh, like really well, natural talent for the cross. Yeah, I've always had. I've always. I mean, the reason, in my opinion, why my cross comes a bit more naturally to me is because when I started, I first started running. I started running quite late. I was like 14 years old when I started. Yeah, and group I was in we never really we didn't have a track so it was I started training on track on the 2021 season in preparation for Palin because okay. I switched I switched coach from track uh, for my coach like a satellite little like group coach Tim Eglin who's much more like much more national level coach yeah. and also I started to train with a bit of a jack on the track so yeah it's always because like even now like even if I step on the track um it, it just it just doesn't feel as comfortable as when I'm on grass. I'm looking I'm definitely looking to shift that track now. Like I want to move away from cross almost and come put my cross into track. That's where that's where that's where all like sort of the clout is sort of. So that's where I'm gonna you're gonna, you're like, gonna take like, the clout to the track. Yeah, I, I it. So I'm they... trying I am trying to like I am doing some track sessions in the winter now, like yeah. just trying to get that comfortable feel with have grass. Yeah. So just move it over a bit. Yeah, definitely on the track. Yeah, for sure. That that makes complete sense to me. Um, so obviously you just mentioned that you didn't get right into running to your 14. Would you mind taking me through your journey from from your 14 to now? Like have you changed clubs, changed coaches, changed yeah. specialties? Yeah, sure. yeah, so I sort of it's, it all started off sort of it was just before like I think it was like and so just before my 14th birthday, I did like my first, you know, you got the district school. I, I did that. I sort of won, I just won that. And then, just one uh, yeah, just, I just, yeah, I won it. It was, there was, there's not much, there's not too much competition at that sort of age. But then you, then I went to the county schools. Nobody knew who I was. I didn't know who anyone was. I came, I came fourth. I didn't even realize that was a thing. Like the English schools, so they, I didn't even realize that was a thing. But, and then I did, that. and then I got scouted. Well, I, I did the, you know, the southeast schools into counties. Yeah, was that Bands Hatch that year? I remember. Um, and my first coach, Trevor Raggett, he's now he's not doing coaching anymore, but he 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 said to me, Oh, come along, join, and we'll get you ready for English school. So I did about I did about three weeks worth of training. Two weeks worth of training to English schools. And then um English schools, I missed out on an England. So uh, yeah, I missed out on an England spot by one spot. So I came ninth. Yeah. And that was sort of where it all sort of really like that really. I got to me a bit 
and so that's when I really started to kind of put the foot down for that but then there was a period between like sort of like I was four to uh, so year um year nine year and eleven so through the G, like sort of the GCSE years I was just sort of I was running with that sort of satellite group around the in Woking around that around around that pill park that grass field um yeah. then so the bullet like the training there was it was very it was quite intense but there was there was not a lot of it and sort of at that age at that time you know it's sort of like you you go there you, you must do see the mates more and so sort of when it, it's just trying to it's just trying to like you know get into the sport and just enjoy it and then sort of by the time you was about 15 16 i thought of, i wanted a bit more from the sport i wanted to progress develop and then actually um my coach my coach at the, it was more of the sort of the group i had at the time um it was it was sort of getting smaller and smaller so um i left that coach Trevor, and then i joined tim which allowed me to train with um like Jack and Ricky Harvey and that sort of uh, group which sort of train up at St Mary's yeah. and um yeah so I started training with them in 2021 and um yeah that's sort of 2021 had the had the, all the trials and everything and that's all go around and, stuff, and that's sort of where I'm at now basically so yeah well, it sounds like it sounds like training with those guys definitely paid off for you yeah definitely yeah Jack Jack definitely um and he pushes me in training <laughs> they do they kind of impart like knowledge to you as well like give you tips and yeah yes yeah so jack's a huge mentor for me i mean he he's he, he helps me how like how to train properly like it, it was a totally different type of thing like when you're young almost like you turn up and like, you get the spikes out it's almost like a race almost every single rep but then training with them it's almost you i was like i remember the first rap i did them like why are we not sprinting um, yeah but uh, with them, with them is like much more, you know, taking it, take each lap and each rep and turn, sort of stuff like that. And then, yeah, that's all there, the training, how that works. That? Yeah, that's cool. So um, just to clarify, this is Jack Rowe we're talking about, right? Yeah, Jack Rowe, yeah. Just for the listener at home there. Yeah, cool, cool. Um, have you ever been out to like Font Romeau with Jack at all? Or No, I haven't been out with, I haven't done any training camps with Jack. Um, I have been to Font Romeau. I went with the uh, university last year. And that was a great experience that. Really, yeah. just get away and just you know grind out the track season. Yeah, but, I'm sure. Well, all these pro athletes are uh, they're good. They're good mates to have. I'm sure it will come in very handy for you. Yeah, sure. yeah, for sure. So yeah. obviously, you mentioned then um, you're studying at Birmingham Uni. Um, for someone who's a bit ignorant when it comes to the uni running life, um, like myself, um, I always associate with the best runners coming from either like Loughborough, St Mary's, maybe got like Cardiff Met and Leeds. So what would you say to someone who maybe is listening to the pod now, thinking of going to university next year or in a couple of years' time? What would you say about the Birmingham uni like running scene? What what brought you there? Oh, I think, I don't know where to start really. I mean, it's just, I, I was actually shocked when I, like, it's just, I, I don't, I don't want like, I, I don't want to sound like I'm like messing up too much, but honestly, it is just unreal. I mean, everything from like the group runs all the all the socials just the way the coaching how everything's set up i mean it's just perfect i mean if you were i think if, you, if you're a long list young listener coming like in sort of sick form just and especially with birmingham like we're so unelitist you don't have to you don't have to be the best you don't have to be you don't have to be you don't have to be good you can just come we'll embrace you in and and yeah it's, you can come to all the sessions it's just yeah it's just brilliant um the coaching here is we got well we got Luke Dunn, who's the head coach, but Ben Miller he's he sort of he sort of looks after me at the university, and with so Tim so Tim's like my base coach, you know how that works. Deep. Yeah, Tim's my base coach, and sort of Dean looks after me. So he sort of mentors me and just makes sure I'm doing what I'm meant to do. But yeah, the, the university yeah provides so much. Um, based massive support um yeah and i highly recommend it to any any young athlete who wants to go to uni and run do you um do you ever find there's a bit of like a like a conflict of interest between say your uni coach and then your coach back at home is there yeah. anything like or is it always quite coherent oh yeah no. yeah we've got yeah we're no problems at all with that we've got a little group chat so yeah are they all in it so you'll have a little text like woo, just one liverpool cross <laughs> uh yeah 
It's, yeah, sort of a little bit. Yeah, no, I guess that's much, much more on the training side, but you know, it's yeah. there. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. So, um, what sort of like facilities do they have at, at Birmingham Uni? This is getting into a bit of like a Birmingham Uni advert, but um, but yeah, just for someone <laughs> who's interested. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, we've got like you know standard gym. Um, it's like a big gym. We've got like a swimming pool, um, a sauna. Matt, Matt, I, I talked to Matt Stone the other day. He um, he said Lafa don't have a sauna, so I was sort of rubbing that in his face. So if he's listening <laughs> to that, I'm lucky, mate. Um, yeah. <laughs> Other than that, yeah, so you've got the swimming pool sauna, other facilities, you've got the track. So, yeah, it's just everything's there. I'm literally, like, the, the sport and fitness centre is just sort of just 100 meter, like a kilometre, 500 metres up the road. You can just sort of go in there, use it whenever I want. I, I have a scholarship there, so I can sort of, I don't have to pay and I can just use it and just do whatever I want there. I can put the cost in there, I can work in there. Yeah, everything's just there for me, really yeah good stuff yeah that's kind of what i was getting out obviously um, i don't know if you know I'm, I'm i grew up kind of running with matt um yeah. and i'm good, good mates with him so I'm, i i love digging at the different unis because i'm i'm i don't go to where, you where are you where are you at you go i'm i'm studying uh, osteopathy in maidstone so i'm not at any of okay. the big running unis um if, if i want to do bucks it's extremely expensive for my uni because no one else does it <laughs> yeah um so hopefully I'll do it next year, but we'll see. But yeah, yeah, so I don't go to any of the mainstream unis. I did think about it, but I just want to stay at home, to be honest. I have a, a yeah, good, good yeah. Life. So um, but yeah, so um, let's talk a little bit more about your training if you're if you're happy to do that. So yeah, take I'm happy, yeah. your standard like training week, your your bread and butter. Yeah, so my bread and butter is we are developing it over the years. Um, I do I do come from relatively low like mileage background. Um. This year, we talk, do we talk from just this just this year? Yeah, yeah. So you're current, so this your year. current training over the last yeah, six so months. Current, yeah, so over the, so over the last six months, so leading into track, it was sort of, I'd have like a, a tempo-ish session on the Monday. And that would be like like two by one mile, two by one mile, one mile, one mile, off like 75 seconds. That's like a four mile tempo session. This was in the track season. Then Tuesday would be like a 35 minute run. Wednesday would be a session. Thursday would be another like 45 minute run. Friday, I'd always, I always have a Friday rest day. Saturday would be a session and Sunday of my long run. Yeah. Um, and then, that, yeah, so that was my sort of, it's like a standard track session. From, if I'm talking about a track session last year, I did get, I got, I feel like I, I did get it wrong quite a lot of the time. I sort of, Saw what other people were doing, and I think I made the mistake of jumping in what they were doing and not really focusing what I need to do. Yeah. And so that was probably one. That was probably a big lesson I learned from last year's. You know, you just need to focus on you. You need to do what you need to do. Everyone reacts to different things. Like, I'm not. I'm not going to react the same way as someone else if they're going to do this this week and sort of different things like that. Yeah. So I typically do. It was more. I trained more like a 5K runner last year. I didn't really do I didn't really do much sort of intensity like the like the, the long the shortest rep I probably did was about was was a two hundred meters but they would, I only do like two or three of them yeah. at the end of a very quite a long session so they weren't necessarily that fast it was just there was just a lot of it so and then that was and that was twice a week and so next year since because I'm I'm having I was a three thousand meter specialist sort of last year. I'm yeah. having to go because I'm a senior next. I'm gonna to have to either go for the five thousand or fifteen hundred. And me and my coach have decided to do both. Okay. I really, um, explore both. Yeah. And I do get a lot of like, you know, will you're not on fifteen hundred meter? Will you're not on fifteen hundred meter? But, but like, I think you still need like look at all the best five thousand meter runners in the world have a mate unbelievable fifteen hundred meter times. You know, yeah. um, and so you, you still need to be extremely strong. And so, so I think. The arrangement of track sessions next year is much gonna much more gonna be like I'm gonna do one fifteen hundred meter session sort of and one five thousand meter session of the week. I always I always believe I write quite well to intensity, especially like especially like since when I was younger, all the sessions were really intense but quite short. Okay. Probably look back to look back to that at that well well, and then leading from back in the summer to cross country, we then. Um, We've increased the Sunday long run from about uh, 50 minutes to 75 minutes. And then we're just sort of building 
added extra day of running. So last year cross country, I still had the rest days, but now I only have one. Okay. And um, and then now the tempo on a Monday now is just straight, and it's quite a lot faster as well. So a typical week now is sort of Monday five 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 mile tempo, okay. Tuesday fifty five minutes, Wednesday. Um, a cross country session Thursday. I'm doing my long run on a Thursday now because, okay. yeah, because um, if I session Saturday, long run Sunday, tempo Monday, that's, that's quite a lot. And I just want to have that extra sort of day to recover with a with an easier run. Yeah. And I'm now and off for that. I'm now I'm now doing S uh, S and C like weight training, doing um like press ups and sit ups sort of. And now I'm starting to do some weight. So, and then, yeah. And over the week, we're still just looking to increase each week by like maybe two or three kilometers just to very, very, very gradually increase yeah. the, the training. Okay, cool. So, what is your, if you don't mind asking, what is your kind of your mileage roughly at the moment, like give or take? Um, Mama, I work in kilometers. Okay. So, I do my average weekly kilom- kilometer ridge is probably about, it's about at the moment 70 kilometers, 75 kilometers. Okay. I think that's about what 40 50 miles yeah yeah about 45 yeah, yeah. 45 miles yeah. yeah so yeah no that's a, I think that's really good um obviously you don't want to start hammering the miles too young because then it's like yeah. you've got nowhere to go yeah, yeah exactly yeah we always want somewhere to go and make the most out of each increment I guess do, do you ever feel like a, a a lack of um I don't know how to phrase it but like you want to keep running more but you kind of have to hold yourself back a bit and go no like I don't need to run 50 minutes there, I only need to do 35 or what or whatever. Uh not really. Um, I mean, I do trust so much in my coach. I believe what he's given me is what I need to do and what works for me. Yeah. And I also sort of I can I can I can tell when I'm running, like I can almost tell if I'm gonna benefit from it or not. Okay. And most of the runs so far I feel like I'm I am benefiting. So but there, yeah, I guess there is sometimes sometimes if I might want to push for a bit longer, especially if Especially if everyone else in the group is doing longer or shorter, I, it's, there is a tendency to, to pop in with that. But you know, as I said before, you just you've got to do what you've got to do. And I think that's really important. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Do you do you tend to do your sessions more in the mornings or in the evenings? Or is, or is it a bit random? Uh, it's a bit random. But I definitely prefer evening sessions. I think evening sessions a bit more woken up and fluid. So yeah, yeah. Are you, are you a morning person? I, I don't really have a choice at the moment. I, I just kind of cram my workouts like when I can around uni. Yeah. So, like yeah. Tuesdays is an evening, and then Thursday, Saturday are morning sessions. Um, oh, but yeah, right. I have to say I do find I perform better at the evening ones. Yeah, so, I, I find that as well. Yeah, I think I think everyone does. If I'm being honest, you're just a bit more flexible, woken up, warmed up. I think, I think really. Yeah, it's like you've had like you've had breakfast and lunch, so you're properly fueled and whatnot. So. Uh, yes, and that, yeah, that's another big thing as well. Fueling. Do you, do you find fueling quite easy? Do you struggle with getting the diet right? Or, um, as a student, <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a lot of you know days where you know I get back from like a lecture or whatever and just you know can't really be bothered to cook a full meal, so just off to the ready meals it is, no vegetables or anything like that. But I do try and I am trying to like have a I've got a, I always. Have, make sure i have a bag of frozen bread in the fridge at least i have i can just quickly be like boiling hot water over the top microwave it full of fruit like a vegetable bowl with every meal i have um fruit i have bananas that's about <laughs> that's about the only fruit i really eat one of the best fruits um, yeah it is such a good fruit yeah. <laughs> and um i think what i'm trying to get at is that you don't have like a super special diet is look uh, no, like, no, no, at home. No, they, really, they put no. these elites on pedestals and think that they they just eat chicken rice and veg all day every day and that's not the case yeah no it's, it's i don't i mean people it does make a difference but for me i i don't think it's totally necessary i think as long as you i think for me i'm i focus on how much i i eat like how much rather than necessarily the quality i think quality is important right but because we're just right because I'm just running and doing so much I think I focus on more just trying to get as much as I can in me rather yeah. than rather than making sure I'm having like sesame seeds in my porridge sort of thing yeah. <laughs> yeah that's a good way of looking at it making sure you have lots of porridge rather than worrying about whether there's sesame seeds in it or not yeah, yeah exactly yeah <laughs> I like that I like that okay yeah. so 
after winning a big race like Liverpool, what kind of happens? Is it like a couple of days of like decompress, like relax a bit, or is it straight back on the horse, like let's carry on building sort of thing? Um, yeah, so after Liverpool, my long run was, was back to 50 minutes. It's sort of a day of, yeah, just one day really. And then yesterday, yesterday was lighter, lighter tempo, so just a 10 minute tempo yesterday. And then I think now after this sort of recovery day, I'm going to hit tomorrow hard. So yeah, straight back on the horse just for, for this week and then I'll start using back down again. Yeah, ready for ready for yeah, training. Ready for training, yeah. That's that, makes sense. that makes sense. Is there anything that you really look forward to that you can't have in like your normal training life that you go after that big race? I can have that Chinese takeaway, I can oh, have that Greg sausage roll or whatever. I love a night out, to be honest. Do you like a night I out? Do, I do love a night out. Yeah. Um I've already got a plan for when I get back. Sort of. Okay. So um yeah, I've I've been very good. I haven't been out since the start of September. Um okay. I've been very good with that and kind of like yeah just i haven't been ill either that's another big thing going out every, i swear every time i i went out last year i'd either get ill or injured it's just, <laughs> it's just yeah it's just a bit of a bit of a bloodbath but um yes yeah, so i've been pretty good with that and you know it's paid off so i'm just gonna carry on with that okay um, um, what's your beverage of choice my beverage of choice oh that's a good question it would have to be hmm. I like Jaeger. Okay. I like Jaeger. I think that's quite a good one. Yeah. I like a mixer as well. So I like a I like a vodka and rubric and mango. That, that actually mixer. sounds quite nice. Yeah. Yeah. Vodka and rubric and mango. Um. Yeah. Yeah. It's all, it's all fun and games. Have you ever have you heard of um, Centurion? I haven't. No. Well, I'm, I don't drink, so this is drink. Going over my head at the moment. <laughs> well, Centurion is um. I've always want I've always wanted to it's like a it's like a shot of beer for every minute for a hundred minutes. <laughs> so uh yeah I could from from think of some uh I won't make it past like 40 but I think I think I, I think I can hang it through. Okay, so the way you're gonna celebrate after winning Eurocross in Turin is drinking a shot of beer every minute for a hundred minutes. Yeah, basically. Interesting. Well Interesting. probably have probably treat myself to like a I'll probably go out with my mate Nando's or like a Nando's and yeah. stuff That's, like that. Sounds very yeah. good. I'm, I'm down for a cheeky Nando's. I'll, I'll come out to Birmingham. We'll, we'll oh, go. yeah. Come on, come on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What's so, your, what's your, oh, what, what are you going to say? What, what's, your, what's your Nando's order? Oh, yeah. Nando's order. Now, we, now we're getting tasty. So I, I like spice, but yeah. I, I don't tend to go for like spicy things at Nando's. So I'd go for like a lemon and herb double chicken wrap. Oh. I don't know. Sometimes I might <laughs> go for medium. It depends who I'm with. If 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 I'm comfortable with the people I'm with, I'll go for go for a lemon and herb. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean. Like, you mean. You like steaming up. <laughs> yeah, just sat there eating like the hot one, just like no, nah, it's fine, yeah. mate. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah. then I'd probably go for the broccoli and then the rice. I really like the rice. Yeah. So, what about yourself? I, I get I get chips and garlic bread for the hot all the time. Okay, you go hot. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. No wonder you're yeah, so like skinny and light because you <laughs> probably shut it all out after after eating that. Yeah. Oh. Or just simply just don't want to eat it because it's too hot. That's true. Yeah, you only eat half the portion. There you go. You can't overeat that way. Yeah. I do. Um, I do really like their halloumi sticks as well. Halloumi fries or whatever. Yeah, they are good. They are good. To be fair. And I tried the olives for the first first time the other day, and they were they were very good as well. So uh, yeah. I, what I find like, really mad is like you know when ketchup comes out of a glass jar, it tastes so different. Yeah. It tastes so different. I thought this weekend, you know, it was just like, wow, this is different. To be fair, I'm not a massive ketchup lover, but the best ketchup I ever had, um, it's just like this like bespoke brand. Like I don't think you can buy it in the supermarket, but it was out of a glass jar and for some reason it was just it was so much was better it? than like anything that had ever come out of a plastic jar. But okay, your your, your condiment of choice. A condiment of choice. Well, I work at I at uni, I work at um Gourmet Burger Kitchen. I'm a Okay. Some people say uh, I say I'm a burger flipper. Others say I'm a glorified pot washer, but okay. I go with the burger flipper. Well, oh, I used to work so, at yeah. Five Guys, so we, we have that in common. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My, well, my favourite problem, I like chipotle mayo. That's a good mayo, I think. Mm. Good with chips and yeah. chicken. I'm a, so. I'm a big fan of like Perinés. So yeah, like a spicy mayo. Yeah. 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 
Okay, anyway, we'll get it back to Ronnie. We'll get, get it back on topic. <laughs> talk about food all day. Um, yeah. So the last kind of thing I wanted to talk about is like the the kit you train in. I've seen you train in a lot of like Adidas stuff, but is there particular shoes that you like to wear? And also, which watch do you use, if if at all? Um. Yeah, so yeah, I, I get a few bits and pieces. Adidas. So I've had a little... Yeah, Adidas. So I like the the solar glides. I do all my sort of easy running in them. Yeah, um, they're just a very like sort of they're like very cushioned. But I guess I'm not, I think they're a bit like the Invincibles, Nike Invincibles. I think but just a very robust shoe. And then a tempo in a tempo in the um Asio sixes. I don't know if you have you heard of them. Asio yeah, sixes. Yeah. Yeah. They're a good. Yeah, they're, a, they're a good nice shoe. They've got the foam. and haven't got any carbon like. like like the the rods, Adidas use rods. They don't use plates. Yeah, they sort of rods sort of run run down your metatarsals. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and then racing, racing. I, I race in Nike spikes, the victories. I I ran in those at Liverpool. And then um, I use then for the road relays. I use the the Adios Pros. Right. Okay. Nice. Yeah. And there. Yeah, I really, I really like the Adidas shoe. I, I, I mean, I've it fits me quite well because I've got quite a wide foot, and I think the fit. I find that the Adidas, the Adidas shoes are quite have quite a wide fit. Opposed to Nike, where Nike is quite thin. I find. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure. And uh, I completely forgot to ask, what are you actually studying at uni? Oh, I'm studying engineering. Okay. Oh, it's cool. Tough. Yeah, it's, it's quite tough, but you know, I try. I get the work done. So, is there any projects you're working on at the at the moment? Like, I know building an F1 car or something. Yeah, I'm I'm building an engine at the moment. Okay, pretty cool. But yeah, in, cool. in more ways than one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the yeah, it's pretty diff, like a pretty difficult project. I mean, with about what, fifty different parts in it and stuff. But you know, that's 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 something else. I that's that's a chore for me. You know. Okay. That's Run, just that's literally just. Getting, yeah, running is my real passion. Yeah, running and cooking. I like cooking. Okay, you like cooking your ready meals. Yeah, no, no, no. Like I, I like ready. I have ready meals. Like if I just need to, just need a quick food. But like if oh, I've okay. got nothing to do and I want to have a, I enjoy. That's more of a hobby for me. Like, I like I make a good lasagna. Okay. Um, okay. my mum makes a good lasagna, but I think mine's better now. So, I don't. If she's listening to this, then she'll she'll approve of that. Like, Sorry, Mrs. Barnico. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so, okay. Yeah. so i don't know if you've listened to any of the other podcast episodes but basically i've got some trivia questions for you go on uh, um some of them are, might be easy some of them might be pretty difficult and i've tried yeah. i try and keep the difficulty the same for every single guest um but obviously it's very difficult because there's only so many running questions out there um so so far out of all the guests everyone's got four except ellis cross who got three sorry ellis <laughs> um so yeah you could go straight to the bottom of the leaderboard you could also go straight to the top so are you okay. happy to continue yeah i'm happy to continue let's go okay, right so the first question i've got is uh what was your first ever park run time and i'll give you a window of plus or minus five seconds because i feel like that's a pretty tricky question okay um is it 20 i think it's 2030 yeah, it's, it's 2031. So like, it's okay. in the window. So you got a point for that one. I'll give you that one. Okay. Yeah. You're, one for, you're one for one. Yeah. Um, That was at Guildford. Is that a... Yeah, Guildford. Your local park one. Yeah, that's where I live. That's yeah. my local park one, yeah. Okay, the second question is... uh, What... what uh, this is a really... I don't... I think this is a tricky question. You might know it straight away. But um, what is the world record for under 20, 3,000 metres? And you can... If you can, if you can either name the time or who has the record, then I'll give you the point. Oh, I'm going to go seven forty-five. Okay, point and zero two. Okay, and I think it was ran by was it Yomif Kajeltra? Okay, right. So I'll give you the point because you got Yomif, but it's seven twenty-eight. Yes, really. Seven twenty-eight point one nine. Yeah, that's crazy. That. That is ridiculous. But you, I'll give you the point because I did say if you, yeah. if you get if you get the guy. So, I just got one more to get Ellis then. Come on. Yeah, one more to get Ellis, and then um, yeah, I mean, you, you're. 100%. So who's on four? Who's on four? Who's on four points then? Matt's on four. Matt's on four. Um, Samantha Harrison's on four. Matt Fox from Sweat Elite's on four. Um, I can't remember who else I've had. Jake Smith's on four. Jake Smith, yeah. 
Uh, so, so yeah, you, you've got some kind of running royalty up there with you at the moment. But if you could beat Matt, I mean, <laughs> that'd be pretty, yeah. pretty good. He had some nasty questions, actually, in fairness. But, um, okay, right, third question. I feel like this is this might be the easiest question on the uh, on the list. Maybe maybe not. Uh, but who won last year's under twenty Eurocross in Dublin? Axel Axel Van Christensen. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. See, oh, maybe yeah. it's made it a bit easy here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. See, as you, you can probably tell, he's just like, up the road. Yeah, is he? Oh yeah, because he was a he was, he came for Liverpool, didn't he? Yeah. So yeah, he's at Birmingham. Yeah, yeah, oh, he's at Birmingham. Yeah, doing some sessions together. We've done a, yeah, we've done a few sessions together. Oh, really? so just sitting in behind him. Yeah. Okay, okay. so he, he's That's your main I mean. competition for... Um, will, he, will he do under-20s? At... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he'll, do, he'll be doing under-20s, yeah. Well, he's the main competition then. Yeah, so like he's, yeah, he's the big name. He's the big name. Okay, okay. He's running well at the moment as well. Yeah, I saw well. Yeah, he, had a, he stacked it in the senior men race and still managed. Yeah, yeah, he did stack it. He still came back. I was surprised how well, well back he came from, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, got, got taken out, got taken out. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's yeah, it's uh, it's horrible, isn't it? So, yeah. fourth question. This is again, you can tell I've already started to run out of questions a little bit. Here. Yeah. Um. Fourth question is uh at the twenty twenty Eurocross Champions uh, Champs in Dublin, which team topped the medal table? Great Britain. It was Great Britain. Yeah. See, so yeah. <laughs> I'm making these way too easy. Another point. Yeah. Out of interest, do you know how many of the different medals they got? So gold, silver, bronze. There's seven medals. Oh. They got seven medals, but what GB? Yeah. What? Well, what? Well, as a whole team? Yeah, as a team. Yeah. Um, I know we got a medal. Meg, I, me- I remember Megan Keith won her race. She so she was under twenty gold. Um, Charles takes one. He he was a gold. The under twenty three get a silver. I'm not sure. Yeah, so yeah, four golds, one silver, two bronzes. Um, yeah, you're right about the um the golds. The silver was the under 23, and I'm not sure who got the bronzes actually. Um it might have been the C or might have been oh a relay team. No, no, the relay team they got gold. Yeah. yeah, they got gold. Okay. The the fifth and final question. This is for one hundred percent. You'd be the first ever person. There might be there might be an uproar because these questions have been pretty. That sounds like that's on the gold winning podcast. Get it? <laughs> okay, right. Um, this, yeah, okay. Who ran the fastest leg in the under twenty category at the Mansfield Cross Country Relays earlier this month? Uh, was it me? <laughs> it was Will Barnacle. <laughs> yeah, it was you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> five for five. So. Um, <laughs> There might be an uproar for making some of those questions ridiculously easy, but I've done my best. Okay. <laughs> Matt's going to be fuming. <laughs> I did that just despite Matt. Just despite Matt. Yeah. No, well, thank you very much, Will, for coming on to the pod. Yeah, thank um, you very much. I really appreciate your time. And uh, yeah, I hope, you, I hope you run well in two weeks' time in Turin. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. Take care. Take care.